Hello, uh, I know it's been a little bit since I posted a video. Uh, I've been working on school now. I'm back at, at Northwestern doing classes and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, I have a reason to make a video now, and that is uh, I will be going through why I believe Next.js and Supabase is the best stack for solo or independent web developers who want to, to freelance, basically. Um, I've, I've been going through a bunch of different stacks over the course of the summer. Um, and one of the personal projects I'm working on, ticker tab, which I've talked about a little bit, uh, I've cycled through a lot of stacks just on that project itself. And, uh, I finally settled on, uh, Supabase and Next.js, um, deployed with Netlify. And I'll kind of go through the reasoning for that in this video. Um, and I also have, uh, my first contract for someone else. Uh, I'll be developing a website. Uh, I'm not going to say who for yet, cause it, I don't know if they're okay with me saying that. Um, but I might make a video in the future, sort of going through that. Uh, development process as it happens. Um, but anyways, for the time being, I will be going through the uh, the stack I'm talking about here, Next.js and Supabase, and sort of explain why it is a good choice for independent web web developers. Um, so yeah, let me just switch my screen here. All right. Uh, so Next.js and Supabase. Um, as as a solo web developer, someone who's going to develop and deploy a website all on your own, um, sort of the three different phases that I can I, I sort of have conceptualized in my mind are the design, development, and deployment stages. And those those two, those stages can overlap a little bit too, um, especially with tools like Netlify. Um, like for instance, as I'm developing a website before its initial launch, I'll just put it live and look at the uh, the URL. And as I push to, to Netlify, um, I can sort of see it update. So, anyways. Uh, these are the three stages, but it doesn't mean they have to happen necessarily in, in this uh, exact order. Um, for the design side of things, um, you sort of have three different choices. Uh, you can do no code, low code, or choose a framework. Um, I suppose you could also do vanilla, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And there may be some cases where that makes sense, although I would probably, even in those situations, um, if, I'm, if I'm trying to develop a vanilla website, I would go with 11T just to have the, the benefits of static site generation. Um, and I guess a little bit of abstraction. Um, and that way you don't pass off a, a super heavy JavaScript framework to your your um, consumers. Um, but for, for maybe anything with a little bit more, um, like more complexity, you might want to choose a framework. And uh, I'm, I'm good with React, which is why I've sort of stuck with React frameworks. Um, I've messed around a little bit with Svelte and a little bit with Angular. Uh, so far, I, I find Svelte to be understandable. Um, I haven't really wrapped my head around Angular. Um, I do have a couple job interviews though that I'm, I'm applying for. Anyways, I'm digressing a little bit, but um, yeah, anyways, React is sort of my bread and butter. So that's sort of why I was looking at Next in the first place. Uh, so now the benefits of Next.js, as I was just saying, it's React um, and I'm good with React, which is a good starter place for me. Um, also, if I ever wanted to hire out help, uh, React is a really common framework. A lot of people know how to use it. Um, I learned it in one of my classes. So a lot of students will know how to use it too. Um, which should make hiring help easier. Uh, and the other benefits of Next.js, um, Ben Awad made a video sort of comparing Next, Gatsby, and Create React App. Um, and I think I think the frameworks have evolved a little bit since that video. Um, but basically every problem that Create React App solves and that Gatsby solves um, is also solved in Next.js. Uh, maybe the only thing that's not solved exactly the same way is client-side routing, um, but it uses, it, it prefetches URLs uh, for your links. Uh, which essentially gives the same uh, user experience as client-side routing. Um, so anyways, yeah. Um, you, you can deliver rendered, uh, rendered content for SEO um, with static site generation and server-side rendering. So that's sort of the Gatsby uh, side of things is like Gatsby's, hey, we have good SEO, we have uh, static site generation, Next does that too. Um, but Next also has server-side rendering built in. Uh, and the other nice thing, which is something that Gatsby does, is that the routes of your either JavaScript or JSX or TypeScript files, um, those routes will match the actual route for the URL, which I just find to be super convenient and it just seems so intuitive. Uh, like I just know which file to go to and there I'll see the page that's being rendered at that uh, URL. The other really nice thing about uh, Next.js is the API is built in. Um, so in your, your um, pages folder, there's a subdirectory called API and inside of API, it's all the, your server side code. Um, and it's just super nice sort of having the, the two, the front end and the back end just together 
Um, it's a really neat abstraction that I think Next.js has, has pulled together. The benefits of Superbase. Um, so Superbase, I was a little bit scared of it at first. I had used Firebase before and Superbase seemed like, I don't know, I was, was kind of hesitant to try it, um, but it uses SQL, which is different than, than Cloud Firestore and SQL. Um, once you sort of get the hang of it, I think it makes analysis of data a lot easier um, just because it sort of, it forces that um, your specific data structure uh, on the data. So you know, like which fields each, each row will have. Um, it also provides authentication uh, right out of the box uh, using Netlify's GoTru, but it's, it's been upgraded um, with the Superbase fork. Um, and as far as self-hosted authentication for web apps, I've, I've gone through so many of them. I actually have a, I think I made a YouTube video about it and I have a, a Git repo that sort of goes through all of them. And uh, as far as I can tell, GoTru is, is probably the best for, for something like a, 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 um, a SaaS app or a, um, an e-commerce commerce app that you're just sort of developing like your, your one application. You don't have different uh, things you're trying to pull together. Um, like with, oh, what's that called? Um, I can't remember what it's called, where you have a bunch of different apps that use the same authentication. The thing is though, is that you could have multiple apps with the same authentication and just use the same super base backend for different front ends. Um, so that's still, I guess, technically is an option. Um, another nice thing is role level security. Uh, I was initially scared of role level, role level security because I'd always sort of put all anything that interacted with the database in the back end. Uh, and just that way, I that was my way of preventing the user from uh, affecting like the wrong things. But once you get the hang of role level security, uh, it sort of allows you to um, minimize the amount of back end code you have. And uh, it's actually like, it, it's, it's nice to work with once you get the hang of it. Um, there are also fewer serverless functions, so if you're trying to minimize the amount of serverless computations you're making um, using uh, real level security instead of just putting all of your database logic inside of a serverless function, um, that can be a better uh, experience. Also, like I said, I was a little bit scared of Superbase at first, but as I've progressed with it, used a little bit, it has a really good developer experience. Um, I've noticed a couple problems in the documentation. Um, I don't know if it, if it was something on my end or not. I didn't submit like a pull request or anything, but for instance, um, for the database they have in the documentation an upsert function and that didn't work so i just had to essentially well what i'm doing for the time being is just deleting the row and then creating the new row um, instead of upserting um and maybe that's just something that i've messed with my end um, but i would say overall i've had a phenomenal de developer experience with superbase um so long story short why next and superbase Superbase, um, a ton of the groundwork is not ahead of time. You don't have to set up authentic, well, I mean, you do have to set up a little bit of authentication, but long story short, it's gonna save you a lot of time using the stack. Um, also, another benefit is the entire stack can be self-hosted. Um, you can Dockerize a Next.js app, um, and Superbase is already open source. The Docker files are public. Um, that being said, you don't have to self-host, and I would recommend probably not self-hosting, because that does add complexity, but it's just nice knowing that the option is there. Um, it sort of gives you a little bit more freedom uh, which is always a good thing. Uh, and as far as I can tell, um, it's the easiest way to incorporate an API authentication C SEO into database as a sole developer and ship it to production um, without sort of the extra overhead of provisioning everything yourself. So that's that's a super big bonus. Um, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I wanted to say about this stack? Um, I think, oh, the other thing, I think, did I talk about deployment? Oh, I didn't talk about, okay, so yeah, deployment. Uh, I'm messing this this order up a little bit, but we'll just go with it. Um, so there are two sort of main deployment options. There's Netlify and Versal. Um, they're very similar. You, uh, they're automatically, they automatically deploy your code once you push to your, your master branch on GitHub or whatever Git service you use. Um, there's also automatic scaling. It's, it's all serverless or just hosting, so you, um, you don't have to worry about provisioning new servers. Um, you might sort of bump yourself out of Netlify's free tier. Um, for Versal, if you're making money with something, you have to go with the $20 a month. I think it's 20, maybe 19. Uh, you have to go with that tier, but with Netlify, you can use it commercially for free. Um, so anyways, deployment is super easy with those uh, two tools and they integrate super well with Next. Um, also automatic SSL, you don't have to deal with that. Um, and yeah, I think I've covered everything there. Um, also, um, like I said before in the, the TLDR slide, Net, uh, uh, sorry, Next.js and Superbase can both be self-hosted, which is big because there's no, no vendor lock-in. Um, if Netlify Reversal decides to just jack the prices up, 
uh, or anything else like that. You can just find uh, somewhere that you want to, you know, set up a Kubernetes cluster, dockerize your your application and run it that way. Obviously, that's not the ideal of our developer experience, but the, the point is not that you can do it, uh, or the, the, the point is not that you should do it, but rather that it's an option and it sort of prevents that, that vendor lock-in. So anyways, yeah, there's the TLDR, which I've already gone through prematurely. Um, so anyways, yeah, if you have any experience with um, Next and Supabase, or if, if you think maybe there's a different stack that would be even superior for solo developers, um, make sure to leave a comment down below. Um, if there's anything you think I missed, um, I'm always trying to optimize my stack. So if there's something that you think I can do to improve my stack, especially before I go and start my, my first contract, um, I'd appreciate any comments leave down there. Also, like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Um, yeah, if you have any questions too, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to respond to all of them. Um, yeah, so anyways, thank you for watching.